Welcome back to More Moss to the People. I am Asa and I am your host. Today, it is just me. Me, myself, and Irene. Me and all my personalities. <laughs> me and all my alter egos. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a part of this incredible journey that podcasting has become for me. And if you're watching this or you're listening to it, I just, I want you to take into your heart the gratitude that I really do have that you take your time to listen to me as I share my heart with you and I share my beautiful guests from all over the world with you, people that I find so admirable and so full of love and hope. I want to share this week about um, why I do this. You know, why is this important to me to interview other people or to meet with you and share my heart? I've told I've told you before, but if you've never heard, that um, this is a very healing journey for me in the fact that my getting to use my voice in a way that matters very much to me, because when it's just me sitting like this, talking to you, then I don't have anywhere to hide. I don't have anything to hide behind. I don't have any masks that I can put on. I have nowhere to go. Yeah, here I am. This is me. This is me. And I've spent a lot of my life hiding behind needing to please other people so that I felt valued. I needed relationships in my life. I wanted people around me because it was important to me to not always be alone. I don't mind being alone. I didn't mind being alone because I spent most of my childhood um, by myself. Um, but I don't necessarily want to always be by myself. And I don't know how you feel about that. But you know, so many people have children. So many people have big families. People have... All, all the things. And I do too. I mean, I have a big family. I don't have necessarily my own children, but I have my cat and I have my husband and I have my family, my you know immediate family and my best friends that have become my family. And people ask me also, I mean, why are you doing the podcast? What are you, I mean, what are you doing? What are you doing here? What's it for? What's it for? <laughs> as if there has to be some reason. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if I, if I have to share a reason why I do this with you for you every week, it's to share my heart with you, the listener in a way that will hopefully make you understand you are not alone. And for a person that spent so much time alone, I didn't have podcasting when I was young. I was by myself in the forest of New York, walking in the trees and talking into an imaginary camera. I've been doing this since I was five years old. 51 years I've been talking to myself. <laughs> some people, some people might consider that to be a little bit of a wackadoodle, but I don't care. I don't care um, because I know that if you're listening, if you are here with me, you need to hear something today too. And you need to connect with other people too. And for me, this time of sharing my heart and not, not social media posts, you know, I mean, and I never, I don't put filters on my posts on social media either because I don't even know how to do it. But I also don't need to. I mean, I live in one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Sweden is breathtaking. My life is breathtaking. And I have spent so many years and done so much work on myself so that I can sit here with you and not be embarrassed or ashamed of my value. Like, am I enough? Am I enough for you just because I am here? If I don't have anything to offer you, like the return of, well, if you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. 
And I'm just coming here with my heart open and my mind and my soul open for you to connect with another human being. You know, that's uh, that takes a lot. That takes a lot to be sitting here and saying it to you, to say that I'm able to do it. And people wonder, well, Asa, it seems so easy for you, I hear. It's um, It's not that hard. It's not that hard. And I think that more people would really be benefited by putting themselves out there more. And that would mean putting, daring more, um, asking more questions, being more uh, courageous in your own life, in your own relationships, in your own work. Because, I mean, what is it all for at the end of the day, if we're not showing up for ourselves first, that's why I'm here. I'm showing up for myself first in a movement that meant something to me. And it still does. I mean, the movement is like ever flowing, right? I mean, I started more moss to the people because I was feeling like I was running and running and pushing and shoving still, still still to this day and wondering why, why don't I have enough clients? Why aren't I making more money? Why do I feel this way? What am I doing wrong? Spending so much of my time, effort and energy and heart looking at what wasn't there, not paying attention to what was there. And honestly, that's boring as hell. It's boring, it's exhausting, and it is an absolute joy kill. And I say to myself that, wow, I really want to have um, an easy life. I really would like to surround myself with people that aren't dramatic. I like to have clients that are really interested in wanting to be better and do better for themselves. And they just need like maybe a guide to help get them there. That was, that was the idea. That was the idea behind it of going into coaching and trying to help people to see themselves, right? I mean, like, what was the result? I mean, what result did they get? The results? I don't, I don't know if they got the results that they had intended. Um, but for me, my intention behind everything that I do, it's for community. In community, being in community is so important to me. And sometimes because I work in my house by myself with my cat that goes in and out of the door 35,000 times a day, I spend a lot of time alone. So my community has now become virtual. It has become an online community. And for you that works in an office environment or that goes someplace every day and meets a lot of people... And that's terrific. I hope that you love it. I hope that you love it. And I hope that you respect the relationships around you. Um, and if you don't, or if you have issues with people, or if you have disconnects, or you have miscommunications frequently with others, your spouse, your children, whomever, your family, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you right now. I'm going to challenge you because the problem is not them. It is you. Now, you might be like, that's bitchy. I can't believe you just said that. I'm not the problem. My husband's an ass. My sister, she's so nasty. She's always been so nasty to me. Um, you know, it's it's the same stories over and over. Like we can put a different head on the person. It's always going to be something, right? Somebody outside of yourself. And trust me. The only reason I can say this is because I have done this for years, blaming other people for my problems, for uh, my unhappiness, my uh, un inability to get whatever it was that I wanted to have in my life. And not until it was probably 2011 when I started to have to take um the, a real good look at myself and my own actions and what I have done to create everything that I have created in my life, good and bad. 
uh, joyous and heart heartbreaking. The choices that I have made that have broken my heart first and broken other people's hearts too. You know, I am, I do not speak from the mountaintop. I don't. I'm coming to you with an open heart and telling you that the choices that I continue to make every day, I don't take them lightly. I usually can make a decision pretty quickly and then I go with it. I don't sit in harbor. I don't waffle back and forth, but I've hurt a lot of people. I've hurt a lot of people in my day because I've been very brash, very crass, um, very, that was that was like my um, my shell, the shell that I chose to keep around me to protect myself. Because if I wasn't really showing myself, then nobody could really hurt me. I wouldn't even allow somebody to hurt me because oh, you're not going to hurt me. I don't think so. You know that whole kind of ugly like that that feeling that you get where you're just like oh my god soften up toots would you soften up well you know it took a long time for me to show that underbelly my sign my astrological sign is cancer i'm a crab and the crab is all about the home all about my things all about being safe all about being really hard on the outside and then really soft underbelly but I don't show that soft underbelly very much, or I didn't at least. And then I started to realize that, my God, it felt so good to share myself, to share my feelings around the choices that I was making, even when they were really ugly. And like, seriously, what was I thinking? Those conversations were so freeing to me. Because it had to, it was doing my shadow work. If you've ever heard of that, shadow work means you're looking at uh, parts of yourself that maybe you don't love so much. You don't really want people to see these sides of you because if they did, they probably wouldn't love you. You think that anyway. Now, what I have discovered for myself is the more I share the dark side of me, the the a scared side of me or the uh, insecure side of me the um it's it makes me more secure it makes me more unapologetic it makes me understand myself better so i've been thinking lately lord how do i want to work i want to work I want to put my heart out into the world now and I want to offer people to work with me because I've stopped doing everything except for my podcasting. I have been building this podcast now for since November 11, 11, 2022 is when I started my first podcast episode. That's when we launched. And today, as of today, August 28th. 2023. Today is August 28th, 2023. And how much I have grown coming to you every week, how, except for the month that I took off on my radical sabbatical, and how much I'm recognizing that I love to work with my tarot cards. Look, Ten of Pentacles. I'm going to show you that card again. Look how beautiful this card is. This is a card of abundance, beautiful abundance, happiness, joy, and abundance is not just money. And, you know, I have put a lot of value around money in the bank account. What does abundance feel like now for me as a 56-year-old woman who I feel like I'm the luckiest girl in the world? How is that? How is that? And I don't even have anything in the world that you can buy from me. Yes, I am selling a pair of boots right now, <laughs> but I got a buyer for those. So the the pressure that I have taken off myself to just kind of let myself land and to think about what, what could I possibly allow myself to do for work in the world where I would extend my highest self, not 
lower self, you know, not where I'm like doing a dance where I think I have to be a certain way to impress you. Or if I say this, then you're going to like me more, you know, that's natural. And that's ugly. I don't like that anymore. I don't want that behavior in myself anymore. I don't want to show you a mask. I do not wear makeup. I cannot wear makeup on my eyes because of the problems that I've had with my eczema. I don't hide behind makeup. I don't hide behind hair color. I don't hide. What you see is what you get. Now, when I think about, wow, imagine, am I like, maybe it's, um, uh, what's the word? <laughs> it seems almost like selfish of me that I would be able to have the, the honor to choose for myself what it is that I would like to do for work in the world. And then I think, what am I talking about? That's always been my choice. It's always been my choice what I do for work in the world. And whether I was working in a bank or I was working in real estate or I was working as a life coach or I was working selling trinkets and trash, driving around North Carolina, uh, or I was working at a trade association for art materials, whatever I was doing, it didn't matter. I chose it. I chose it. So if I take accountability for myself and I look at all of the things that I have done, right? These careers that I have done since I got out of university, I graduated college in 1990. It is 2023. And it's like, who was I when I was in, when it was 1990, what was I thinking? What was I doing? I was just, I was just going and doing whatever, right? I was floating. I was floating. I couldn't get a job doing, I mean, I, I found a job as a teller at a bank. And I was like, I'm a college educated person. I cannot believe that I would go and be a bank teller after I just got this beautiful college education that my parents so beautifully paid for. Thank you, mom and dad. Still to this day, thank you, mom and dad, for paying for that college education at the, the Ohio State University. Graduated in political science. My degree was in political science. Did I want to work in politics? No, hell no. I wanted to, I wanted to get the hell out of college. That's what I wanted. So what do I do? I go work in a bank as a bank teller. And I'm thinking... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a college educated person. Meanwhile, every single person on the line was, a, you know, who, who cares, right? Like it matters. That was still to this day, the hardest job I have ever had in my life. In the fact that if you could imagine how many things were coming at you all the time, constantly money flying everywhere. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I worked my ass off in that job and the days would fly by and I had a blast. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. And I met the nicest people, the clients that would come in with their like bundles of money and counting them and talking to them the whole time, getting at their whole life story, right? I was getting their entire life story <laughs> because I love to know about other people. I think it's so much fun to learn what other people have going on in their lives. So then I started moving up at the bank because it was easy. I mean, I was good at my job. I mean, I was about to get fired from my job as working as a bank teller because I was owed about always oh, out of balance. You have to balance the drawer every night and I could never balance. I was like, oh, it's thousands over. <laughs> <laughs> so my boss says to me one day, Asa, listen, I'm going to have to fire you. Um, or do you want to go on the platform side instead? Because you're really good with the clients. You're really good at talking with clients. Would you like to take more of a sales role and go on the platform side? It's like, oh, okay, so you're going to fire me or I can go over there and do that. And she's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, you know, what? I'll try that. I'll go, I'll go to the platform side. Why not? Yeah. You know, I can try that. So she was so sweet. God love her. She's still, <laughs> she and I are still friends on Facebook. Diana Kutchbaugh, giving you a shout out, you and Bob Kutchbaugh. Um, so from there, 
I moved into a different position. I went to the platform side. I started meeting people, started engaging with them face-to-face at my desk. I got even more time with them and I got to pry into their lives and I got to find out what they were doing and what were their wishes, their dreams, their goals, and what were they thinking? And like, how would they want to save for themselves? Like, what did you want to do? Uh, And I mean, I was giving counsel all the time and helping people understand the value and the importance of saving for themselves, saving money for what their dreams and wishes were, and how could they apply for different things? How could they look at different things in their life? Um, so that they could be more creative and like kind of like open up their minds. And I have no idea. I mean, I was like learning on the fly, but I was really, really good at listening to the people and what their needs were. And I could see like holes. I could see gaps of things that they didn't have in their life or in their products, right? Like in in all the things that we offered at the bank, I could see, okay, what about this? What about this? Okay, is that even going to make sense for them? So I was like a selling machine, but I didn't. I mean, I didn't do it because I wanted to sell bank products. I didn't care about the bank. I cared about the client that they would have different alternatives and options in front of them that could help them make a good decision. So (laughs) 10 years later, after just moving up every two years at the bank, then it was time to move. I got married and we moved. We relocated down to North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. And I started over. I'm like, I don't want to be in banking anymore. I'm done with banking. I'd like to try something else now. And my husband's like, great, you know, let's, we'll figure it out. And of course, then 9-11 happened. 20, uh, 2001, awful, awful time in the world, certainly in America. And, um, Then I started to look at a sales job. At that point, I was like, basically, I will do anything. I will go anywhere, do anything to get out of this house because I cannot sit at home by myself anymore looking for a thousand jobs a day. I mean, right, like no rhyme or reason. There was absolutely nothing that made sense with what I was doing. I was just like throwing myself out for anything at that point. And my self-esteem was at the absolute bottom. Fast forward 50 years. And then I had found this job. I got this job working at a trade association and I worked there for a while. And then I got a job selling trinkets and trash out of the back back of my car, like traveling around, like with stuffed animals in my car, still friends with that boss. I got fired from that job too. Uh, I actually did get fired from that job. I didn't get placed someplace else. She's like, yeah, also I got to fire you. I'm like, oh, bummer. Okay. Yeah. I knew I'd get fired because I was a terrible, I did a terrible job because I didn't like the products and I can't sell something I don't like. A, a recurring theme. I can't do things I don't like. I mean, I can I can do it for a while, right? I can do the dance and then I'm like, I fizzle. I fizzle out. It doesn't work for me. So, and you know, there's people that can do that for their whole lives. That's cool. That's, I mean, great. If that's enough for you, have at it. Have at it. It was not for me. So, you know, it's like, the whole learning the market, seeing like how people are, these mom and pops owning these like small shops. They like they gave their life savings to open up a store and like selling candles and and little little tchotchkes, little things. And that was their life. And they were so nice. And I loved seeing how honored they were when somebody would walk in and I try to get them something that they really needed. So, you know, I really witnessed like small business, like from face to face. Of course, I was selling business to business, um, not selling much, of course. I was buying more from them than what they were buying from me. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I would buy more from the people that I'm calling on to try to get them to buy from me. I would buy things in their store. Uh, because they were so nice. I wanted to give them business. So, um, you know, then I decided to get into real estate and I started selling home res- homes, residential real estate in Huntersville or Lake Norman, right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. And, you know, what a responsibility that was. And all my banking, all my expertise with my banking years and my customer service background and the sales background. And, uh, you know, I understood like that um, my job was to sell, I mean, a hundred percent commission, 100% commission. There was no base salary. There was nothing. What you, what you sold, you ate, what you killed, you ate. Can you imagine? That's what people actually say. 
what you killed you ate i'm like i don't kill i don't first of all i don't kill anything i'm not a killer i don't i don't i can't even kill flies that are in my own house i'm not i don't kill one spider i don't kill ants i bring them all outside so i'm not killing nothing so how I went about working in real estate, I had a business partner and we had a ton of fun. She was an excellent addition to, she had a lot of strengths that I did not. I had a lot of strengths that she did not. And we worked together uh, well together for many years, but uh, the, 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 like the puzzle, like the whole puzzle of putting it all together. Are you seeing like any kind of a repetition here? So there's a repetition of how do I use my strengths? I'm an excellent listener. I look for things for you that are for the, based on what you said you wanted, not what I want, because it doesn't matter what I think you should have. I'm not the one living in the house. This is going to be your home. I mean, people are paying 200, 300, $400,000 for a home. Of course, that's a humongous amount of money and I want them to have their best life, right? Because what's important to me, community and home. Interesting that I'd be working in real estate, hmm. building a clientele database that was enormous because I loved every one of my clients. They became like family to me. Surprise, 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 right? So you see how this all builds up on itself and all during that time while I'm doing this work, I'm pulling tarot cards. <laughs> I love this card. Look, the seven of pentacles. So look, what I was just talking about was laying all these, um, like the seeds, like laying the seeds. I'm working, 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 working. I'm laying the seeds. So this is all about the abundance. I was working so hard, not hard, like in a way that it was a struggle, but hard to make sure that the client's needs were met first. So how then can I continue with this, the realm of, using tarot in my life. So go from real estate, go to become a life coach. I moved from North Carolina, relocated to Sweden in 2011. And I started working in a school. I worked as an administrator in human resources and helped. Uh, I was uh, ombud, a hood ombud, which is like a work environment officer. And that work was far too much for me. I couldn't hack it. I couldn't hack it. I just, it, I felt like I had such responsibility for others that so 750 plus students, 80 plus staff, um, the building, like if there was anything wrong in the building, I felt like it was my responsibility to make sure everything in the building was working. If there was anything wrong with any of the kids and they had so many, so many of them were so sad and so not doing okay in their lives already and staff, you know, it's like there was so much that I, I tried, I became something I wasn't. And I started getting sick. I started having physical problems where I had psoriasis for over a year that was so bad on my hands and my feet from the stress of thinking that I was responsible to help all these people and to make it okay. And I'll tell you, that was a one-way ticket to burnout central, but um, I didn't burn out. Officially, I resigned from that job in 2017, the same year I turned 50 years old. And that was the year that I wanted to start my own business. I left that job and I started my own business as a life coach. And I, I literally started that job as a life coach because one of my best friends said to me, Jade Ponovich, Asa, I think that you would be an excellent life coach. And I said, really, you think? That's how I, that, that, that is how I started going down the path of becoming a life coach <laughs> because somebody else said something that they recognized in me that I didn't even recognize in myself. So now six years later, I have a podcast. I've stopped coaching because I wanted to get myself clear on what it is that I'm doing here. What, what in the hell am I doing here? 
What kind of work do I want to do? And, you know, you've listened to this entire story about all my experiences and about all the things that I've done up to this point. What you see, because I'm home blind, I'm blind myself. I cannot see myself, my strengths. I cannot see that I have these strengths and the abilities to see patterns, to see holes, to see things that other people cannot see. I had no idea. It's like, I don't even remember who I am because I'm so focused on everybody else. And, you know, taking a time to look at myself and looking really at myself and resting. Look, I had to rest the four of swords. This is a time for rest. I had to stop working at that school and I had to get quiet because I was losing my mind. I was losing my marbles because I was spinning. I was seeing tunnel vision. It was like I would sit in my office and I was dizzy. I would get dizzy. I would be like, oh my God, I feel like I'm going to faint. I had to like sit down on the floor with my back against the wall, my legs flat and get, who girl had to take it easy because I couldn't slow my heart rate down because I was also having chest palpitations. I was also having problems swallowing. How many more signs do I need to say, Asa, this is not for you. This is not for you. What's not for you? What are you doing where you are not paying attention in your own life right now for something that is screaming at you saying, this is not for you? We'll come back to that. So now that I've had my podcast nearly a year, a year that I've been doing this and I love it. I love having conversations with gorgeous people who share their hearts and share their wisdom with us on how they dare to live their lives differently and how they have chosen to slow down and how they, I do this because I wanna learn. I'm not doing this because I think that I got something to tell them. I'm doing this because I wanna learn and I want you to hear it too so that you can also learn. So now, Today, what can I do? What is it that I really love? What can I do that is easy and that I want to share with the world? I love tarot. Ooh, the bottom of the deck, the hierophant. That's the teacher, the teacher. We teach each other. We teach each other. And the most important things in my life are my community and my home and my family. My relationships, right? Come into my fold. You are in my fold because you are listening to my podcast. The most intimate thing, honestly, that I do. You hear more from me than probably my husband does because he doesn't even listen to my podcast. But <laughs> Listen, if you're listening, that makes me happy. If you're still listening, that makes me even happier. I am honored. I am honored that you come here and you listen to me. Now, what do I want to do for work in the world? I want to work with tarot. I want to work with tarot. I want to work with talking to you. I love this card, the emperor. <gasps> Very masculine energy. And that's me. I'm the emperor. I am the emperor. Let me let me be the person that can show you for your own self where you're stuck, where you're blocked. What are you doing right now? Because decluttering our body, mind, souls, and homes starts by coming up, looking at ourselves from a completely different position and understanding I didn't see this. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it because I was in it, you know? And sometimes we need other people to help us get out of where we're at, out of where we're at. That's such an Ohio thing to say, get out of where we are so that we can look at ourselves from a different perspective. Yeah. And tarot, tarot cards can help you. Now, I'm going to give you a little brief synopsis of what tarot cards are. They're literally, they're just paper. They're just pieces of paper 
printed. <laughs> the chariot. This is also my card. I've got, a, I love all the cards, but this is a card for me, the sign of cancer. This is a time for action. It's a time for action. It's a time for movement. Yeah. It's a time for movement. So tarot cards are a way for you to access answers from spirit source guide and me interpreting the cards for you and what it is that you need help with. And I'll tell you what, I have been trying to look I'm like, you know what, this is a fluke. It's a fluke that the card says this. It's a fluke that that's what it says right now. That can't possibly be true. And then I wait and then I wait and then I check back. I'm like, yeah, that was true. How did my week go? I'll do like pulls on myself. I'll pull um, a uh, Celtic cross spread for myself like every week and see, okay, what's the week look like ahead? God, help me out because God, spirit, God, source is my co-pilot. Yeah. I travel with God on my shoulder. Yeah. He's like hanging out with me, like chilling with me all day long. And I'm consulting God because God, source, spirit is my, look, look, you see that light coming down? That's God. This is God coming into me right now. And I am accessing information through the cards. Don't be sad. Look, the five of cups. The good thing about doing this kind of work, doing tarot card pulls, is you see the five of cups. The three, he's looking so long and lost. Mm, look at the three cups that are in front of me. But look at the two cups behind you. Look what you still got. Yeah, you know what? There might be some loss there. Emotions, maybe there's some things that you've done that you're not real happy about. There's some situations that you're not super proud of. Um, maybe done some things, doing some things you're not loving. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it with tarot. And then once we find your blocks so that you can declutter your body, mind, soul, and home, once we do that, you can do it. My friend told me this idea. God, love her. She's so amazing. You know, I, I surround myself with other people who are very spiritual, very gifted, uh, mediums, psychics, all of it. And I love all of it. And some of them are better than others. And I am a believer. So people who work with me are going to have to believe that it is possible that you can get answers for yourself through the tarot and also from other sources. Um, she says to me, Asa, you know, that's a terrific idea that you want to offer people three sessions, like three separate tarot sessions to help them get uncluttered, um, in, like in their body, in their mind, in their soul, right in their home to get some next steps. But, you know, I don't even understand anything about tarot cards. I don't even know what it means. What? I don't even know what tarot cards mean. Okay. That, that, no. Hello. Of course. Duh. You know, this is when you've been doing something for so long, you get a little bit lost in thinking that everybody else knows what it is you're talking about. And I will have a gladly have a session with you, a one-time session. I'll do one reading. We'll get you blocked, unblocked. We'll figure out what your blocks are and what your next step is. We'll do that. We can do it one time. No problem. No problem. Just so you can kind of get the understanding and introduction to what tarot is, what it means for you, how it can be used, how you can use it, how I will be using it with you and making you feel 100% safe. And then if you want to do another, you want to buy a three card reading, you could do that. That's cool. But the point of this is to lead us to doing the decluttering work the big work of decluttering your home but we have to get clear we got to get clear first yeah and if you are not located in an area where i am and i am coming to columbus ohio october 8th until december 1st so if you would like to work with me with decluttering and if you would like to work with me as your guide using tarot to declutter your body mind soul and home i am available and depending on where you are, if you are close to Ohio, uh, I potentially could make a trip to where you live um, to meet you, to work with you. This, everything builds upon itself. And sometimes it takes hindsight, right? To recognize this, that everything, not for nothing, my friend, not for nothing, nothing happens for nothing. 
And when we see that the relationships around us, you will have better relationship with yourself. That is the result that I will guarantee you. We work together. You're going to have a better relationship with yourself as the result. I'm not promising you millions of dollars. I'm not promising that your husband's going to love you more, but I'm telling you what you will have is a greater and more expanded, abundant love of yourself because you were going to have so much pride and so much confidence in what it is you are doing with your life today, moving forward not what you thought you were going to be, not doing something that your parents said you should be doing, but who are you today? And we're going to get these answers right here. No more judgment. No more judgment, my friend. Mm -mm. Judgment day is here. <laughs> it's time to change your life for the better. And working with me, Doing this work, it's going to be magical. Magic. Do you believe in magic? I do. I do, my friend. With God's spirit source as my co-pilot, coming to work with you in your life. And even if you don't want to work with me, if you just listen to the words that I'm saying, and if they fill your heart in a way that you get some sort of inspiration and you feel like, Whew, I'm going to try something different for myself today. I'm willing to try something different for myself because this hasn't been working. Then I am so happy. I am happy. I have joy in my heart knowing that you have heard something that you needed to hear today because I do not think for one second that God puts two people together only to help one. That is absolutely one of my premises of my life how I work every single day in my every day. I believe that every single person comes into our lives for a reason. And if you are here, know there is a reason and take away what you need to take away. Yeah. I share my heart with you. I share my love and my passion with you. And please don't forget, don't forget, you have the ability to have brand new relationship with yourself. The most important relationship you'll ever have is the relationship with yourself. And if you're not loving the one you got with you now, let's change that. Oh God, I'm starting to sweat. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. So now you know my story. Now you got my story down. Yeah. This is how I come to this point today. You know, I've shared bits and pieces and parts of this in different episodes, but I want to share my heart. I want to share my heart. And I'm looking at a book right now sitting on my bookshelf, Ask and It is Given. Ask and It is Given. That is a book by um, Abraham Hicks. And I want you to consider asking for what it is that you need to have your needs met. And if you do not have any idea what your needs are, because you have been meeting the needs of every single other person in your life for so long now that you cannot even remember who you are anymore, then my friend, it is time. It is time. Let's get to work. The Eight of Pentacles. Let's get, let's get to work. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I want some more of it. Uh. You take care. I'll have a guest next week. I've got a beautiful guest coming in for you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. Thank you for loving me. I love you. I hope that you know that you are never alone and I am here on your side. So it's God, my, cart, my partner in crime on my shoulder right now. Take care, sweetheart. Have a beautiful week. Bye-bye.